When I was one, five, six years old, I used to do a lot of art. It was one of the favorite things that I really liked doing. I painted a lot of landscapes, still lifes. Now I can call myself a designer, you know. I can be able to say that I've become good at it also because of practice and doing it all my life. The journey of a designer was a long way. I studied in the University of Nairobi. We studied stuff like chemistry, and I remember in my first year, I wondered why. According to me, it was all supposed to be just about art. In my third year, I did industrial design, which was more three-dimensional, which is what I really enjoyed. When I finished university, we had a mini exhibition at the Goethe Institute where my year decided that we wanted to showcase work. Someone saw it and that's how I got a job. It was mostly interiors, that's what my boss did. And I came in as a product designer. It was also more like a learning experience. During that time, we decided to challenge ourselves into something different. And I remember her saying that she'd applied for um, as an exhibitor for the Kenya Fashion Week then. Her idea was to create garments that light up in the stage like metal outfits with like the brief comes out and it's all supposed to be in fabric and we're like oh. I started learning about like fabrics, how they behave complexions, color. I did that for two years in a row and, and I was just, I, I needed something more. I got a job in an NGO. I was pretty young, maybe 26, 27. And I had to manage artisans and the students and create a symbiotic relationship between the two of them. Working at the NGO helped me understand you need each other. It's not about just crafts and hobbies, but it's about being able to change someone else's life by creating employment. After the NGO, of course, the job ended. I needed a full-time job. I needed money. The easiest thing that I knew I could make money with was fashion and it was a way for survival, to be honest. Starting a business from my house was one of the most <laughs> scary things, I guess. I bought an overlocking machine, cost like, then I think it was 8,000 or something. Employed a tailor, got contacts for people, did pop-up shops. The first pop-up I remember was at the village market. We could only make like, I think in a day, three dresses. And that was like pushing it. My sister and a really close friend, who was also staying with us, would go to the exhibition and sell and would keep calling them, did you sell, did you sell? And one day she said, they sold 34,000 and it felt like a jackpot. Working with the tailor <sighs> uh, was a challenge. It was a very difficult, you know, telling him what to do and how to do it. He was more skilled, he had more experience. I knew what I wanted. One day he just said, oh, I got someone who's gonna pay me more money and left. In 2011, I went to school. It was a different experience. It was extremely expensive. My sister helped pay. My ex-boyfriend also helped pay during times when I was defaulting. So I started learning how to make bags. We made bags three months straight every day. 
it was one of the things that when you came out of you felt accomplished. That realization gave me a burst. So in 2012 when I came back I was like feeling creative overboard. I knew I wanted to use African print and that's when I started. I'm excited, I want to start making leather bags and I go to the tannery. There is leather but the guy says all the leather is being bought and sent to China in the blue form. That's the time when we decide to go into upcycling. Buying leather jackets, leather trousers and using it. It never crossed my mind that I needed to borrow a loan from the bank. The bank needed something that I never had. Uh, a car, a title deed. So I didn't, it never crossed my mind that I had to go to the bank and get money, no. So I made money out of corporate work, making uniforms and all this stuff, deadline after deadline, searching for material, making samples. And the time came when I was just like, okay, I'm done. It reduced the amount of corporate work, became more authoritative about what I really wanted to do. You want your business to be based on various things. Trust was one of them, honesty was another. And build it more like a family setting, which is what I wanted it to be. Your workers uh, tend to be more confident to talk to you about their personal issues. And they also sometimes want help with uh, problems they have, they want to borrow money. And uh, you become sympathetic. I started giving money in form of loans. But the thing was the loan was not personal, it was business money that I was loaning. And they would pay in months, but in little bits. So the business started to suffer. At that point I realized that it was okay when there were one or two people, three people. But once you become five, six, and everybody's borrowing a whole long sum of money, you have no money for business anymore. It was emotionally frustrating and draining, always having to carry everybody's burden behind your back. And I said, if we keep going on, we're not gonna be able to have anything uh, running as a business. We have to come up with a solution. And the solution was that we save money every month. Everybody contributing means everybody can kind of be able to draw money off it, to use it on one of those cloudy days when you really need the money. Having this, the burden from the business changed. It, it became better. Have I thought about going to the bank and take a loan after all these years? No. I've tried once when I thought, oh, I need to buy more machinery. I want to expand this thing. I didn't get it. The fact that I have had so many employees and then I have so much overheads. I feel like I already have too much on my plate. I don't want any more. Do I enjoy my success economically? Not really. <laughs> but uh, psychologically, yes. Having a business that has uh, been the way it is now, has been based on the fact that uh, you have to learn to respect each other because I feel like one, I have a team I can depend on, two, 
I have a team I can trust. Three, um, I have done the best I can to make their lives more comfortable. The richness of my business is being able to pay people comfortably, uh, being able to take care of the people that work for me. And their families or people that I extended to their families depend on them and that they are able to also take care of them for me is a blessing.